My name is Chuck Parker. I am publisher of Automotive Digest and Dealer Digest Daily. Today we have another of our ongoing automotive industry executive series or conversation series, we prefer to call them. And again, we have the pleasure of bringing together three key executives from J.D. Power who've just made a presentation on various manufacturers uh, for the current roundtable here in Orlando. Uh, we have Jeff Schuster on my right, uh, Deidre Brego and on my left, along with Dave uh, Sargent. I'm going to let each one of them introduce themselves a little more in detail, and then we're going to have a, a little conversation about what they uh, have seen with the industry and what they see in the future. Jeff? Hi, I'm Jeff Schuster, and I'm Senior Vice President of Forecasting, actually with LMC Automotive. So we're in a partnership with J.D. Power & Associates, uh, and happy to be with you today. Deidre. Hi, I'm Deidre Borrego, and I'm Vice President and General Manager of the Power Information Network, and I also lead our U.S. Automotive Client Services Organization. Hi, I'm Dave Sargent. I'm Vice President of Automotive Quality at J.D. Power & Associates. I think it would be very, very uh, productive to go around the table and have each of our panelists, uh, uh, participants in this forum, talk about what they saw on the platform today, kind of what their perspective on the industry is. One of the things that we want to try to derive from this powerful group is the ability to really not only understand what is going on in the automotive industry, but what seem to be the trends and issues that dealers and OEMs, for that matter, uh, should be paying more attention to. So I guess, Dave, starting off with you, you spent the afternoon of the day talking from the platform about manufacturers. What was your perspective and your total takeaway from that? I mean, I think what really came out was that the, the overall industry is improving so rapidly that any manufacturer who's not increasing their performance at a pretty good leg is actually falling behind. So we had a lot of situations where a manufacturer had improved quality or improve their customer relations, but because they had not improved as fast as some of the others, their relative score actually got worse. So they may have felt they'd done a good job on the year, but others are kind of running faster ahead of them, and so they're actually falling behind. So people are kind of constantly surprised that we show manufacturers performing not so great when they feel that they're moving ahead, but simply it's the fact that they're just not improving as fast as they as their competitors are. Had that changed since the last time around, any, uh, good or bad? Um, I mean, most years we see improvement in most areas. I mean, the nature of the industry is things get better every year, but we are seeing, it, I mean, it gets harder and harder. I mean, particularly in terms of things like quality. Quality is so good these days that to move ahead really quickly is actually quite a challenge. So I don't know it's any, any more than in previous years, but it just struck me this year that I was spending a lot of time saying, well, I know their, their score got worse, but they actually got better in absolute terms, but relative to others, they kind of slipped back. Deidre, you spent the day talking about conquest and market share. What did you see and what do you, what's your perspective on what's happening in the industry? I think that the industry is in a very good place in many regards. The, the, we're seeing transaction prices reaching some all-time high levels. We're seeing much more of a focus on healthy retail sales, and we're seeing the investment that manufacturers have made in new product you know, coming to fruition as they have more choices than ever for consumers. I think what came through very clearly is that it's still a very competitive time for the industry uh, and that there are you know, many different dimensions that manufacturers need to be concerned at. So not, not only keeping your customers in the family by making sure that they have a good experience and offering them more choices when they come back to market, but also continuing to bring new buyers into the market. And new buyers, you know, Consumers, any time they come back to market, they have many, many choices and options available to them. Were there any big changes that jumped out during your analysis of all this data? Well, one of just the underlying factors that uh, we saw was that as inventory improved in 2012, uh, for many of the Japanese manufacturers, their conquest levels returned to you know, what we had seen previous to the tsunami and the resulting shortages that occurred from that. So again, we saw certain brands returning to the position that they had been in previously. Toyota and Honda primarily. primarily. Uh, as well as some of the luxury makes as well. Jeff, you're a man of the futures. I try to be. What do you see? Well, you know, I think, <clears throat> you know, feeding off of what we what we uh, saw in 2012 and looking forward, uh, 
2013 is really setting up to be a very strong year uh, relative to where we've come from. And it's been, it's been a long road, but I think it uh, looks very favorable. Uh, we'll see most brands grow in 2013 uh, from a volume standpoint. Uh, I, I think it, it will continue to be a hyper-competitive environment as well. And I think with the number of product launches uh, that we see this year, which is about a 50% increase over where it was last year, about over 60 new products on the, on the market this year. Uh, it's going to be a lot of vehicles out there competing for, for those, uh, those buyers. So I, I, we would look for that to be one of the driving factors, I think, in uh, seeing really who wins and who loses in 2013. Are there any clear winners or losers that we can talk about or, or not? Did you see anything jumping out? I mean, I heard someone say, oh my gosh, Mitsubishi, what's that about? Uh, is that okay to say those kinds of things? And, and, uh, and what, what does that all mean? Futures? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the, what we show is a kind of a snapshot in time. So we're taking a snapshot of, of a given year and how a brand's performing in a, in a particular year. And things are always in flux. So a brand that looks like it's not performing great in one year and a couple of years later could be performing much better. So yes, you do get a reaction when you show a brand's current performance and it's not strong. And we saw that a couple of times today. But we may see in the future those brands performing very well. I mean, if we had done this 10 years ago, Hyundai would have been Right. largely red and now it's prim primarily blue and green so and then there are other brands who've kind of gone in the other direction so there's no I don't know whether are winners and losers kind of kind of the race is never over there are those who are doing better and those who are not doing so great at any point in time um, but as I say it, it changes from year to year so just because a brand is not looking so good right now doesn't mean in a couple of years time it's not going to be uh, much more successful Jeff your numbers seem to reflect the kind of uh, possibilities that David's talking about. Is that, is that the situation? I mean, if anyone sees a trend and has a reason for a hope and inspiration, it probably will be in the numbers that you're looking at. Is that right? Yeah, that is, that is a case in a, in a lot, of, uh, lot of the brands. Uh, it, you know, it really is dependent on that, that timing of that snapshot and, and you know, what, what's the latest activity. And, and I think the, the bottom line is, and there's a lot of other factors that go into it, but a lot of it comes down to having the newest, uh, greatest product available for the client at the, at the right price and the right experience. It sounds simple, uh, it's not easy to execute. And I think the, the more we, we see these competitive pressures and the number of new vehicles um, you know, that consumers face with, uh, they're, not, they're not going to, 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 to really sit and, and wait for the next product. If, if they want something now, they're gonna go get uh, it from a competitor. So I, I think it really, what it really just boils down is just how hyper competitive the, the market is. And, uh, you know, as, as the market improves and continues to grow, uh, that's even draws more attention. I think more R&D back into bringing out uh, additional vehicles.